What is up, Penguin Colony? This is the Assassin Betrayer. Today, I'm going to be explaining some of the Call of Duty Ghost Extinction. So, I'm just going to discuss some part of the loadouts and stuff and what I use. Currently, I just want to talk about the relics right now since right now I am Prestige 4, I believe. Yes. You can prestige in this. Once you hit level 31, you prestige. And when you prestige, you unlock these things called relics. Relics you get by passing rank 30. They make it harder, but you get more score. Every time you get rank 30, that's when you prestige. So I passed rank 30 four times since I'm fourth prestige. So the relics make you harder, makes the game harder, and it makes your score higher. Now these are the different relics. One of the relics make the aliens do more damage to you. The one you can only use a pistol where you can't buy any other guns. But you can still use your uh, powers pretty much. Uh, this is where you carry less uh, cash. What this does is causes like the amount of points you get, the amount of money you get for each kill to be uh, reduced. And also you can have a total of $3,000 max. Normally you have a total of 6,000. This decreases it by half. Now here, what this does is it makes you have no class, which is pretty much, as you see on the very top left, is class. It's blinking right now, as you notice. There, no class. Alright, and here, you do less damage. So the more of these you have equipped, the more difficult this game is going to be. Now, I like to have more money. Because with the money, I can buy more ammo and stuff. Because if I'm using pistols only, I can easily keep getting ammo for the pistol. But the pistol probably doesn't have enough ammo. Like that much ammo. And this is going to need be a little annoying. Because some aliens get to attack you a lot. And plus, sometimes a whole bunch of aliens attack you at once. Now this is going to be a problem too. Because damage is pretty much what kills the zombies. So, I'm mean, aliens, sorry. If you kill the aliens, if you're shooting the aliens with less uh, damage, then it's going to take more and more to kill them. So therefore more ammo is wasted. So I recommend you guys using like the smaller wallet last. Because that's probably like the most useful thing. And mortal I use, uh, let me take it off so I can show you an example on the classes. So classes, this is kind of what you're basically what you're going to do to have improve your pretty much survival chance. Now, there are four different classes, each of them very different. Let's start with the weapons. So weapons, you automatically start with 20% more bullet damage, so that makes your gun stronger, which is good. And when you upgrade it once, you can switch your weapons faster, and you can move faster, which is kind of like stalker. And you can offhand use, means like grenades and stuff like that. And then you upgrade it twice, you reload, um, you aim down faster. That's what ADS stands for, ADS, aim down sights faster. The third time you upgrade, you reload faster. The fourth time you upgrade, 50% more damage and less spread. Now when it says 50% more bullet damage, it's not adding the 20% from the very beginning also. So it's not a total of 70%. No, it's just pretty much 50% more. So that's like 100%, 150% damage. Alright, and less spread means like pretty much less recoil. Now the tank class. This really increases your health by a quarter when you just start. And this is mainly the class I use when I'm using my mm, powers like this. I mean, let's say you want to make sure that you want to survive more so you have a lot of health. I'd go like this with this, these relics. Maybe just one or two and have the tank class because when you're taking more damage, you're going to need some help. When you're trying to evade the aliens and try to destroy them more easier with more bullets and being more maneuverable, then you're going to want to have more health also. Alright, now, once you upgrade it once, you do 25% more melee damage. So like, let's say they're getting close, like they're all just catching up on you. It's good to just keep knifing them. Because that does quite some damage. Now when you upgrade it three times, you get 75% more health. That's actually a lot of health. And 50% more melee damage. When you upgrade it four times, 
that's a hundred percent more health and a hundred percent more melee damage. Melee damage is knifing pretty much. And that's pretty much twice as much as you originally start with. So you're pretty much twice as stronger with twice as much more health. Now engineer. This is pretty useful if you have someone in your uh, party. Like let's say you're in a group. Because always the main point of this uh, game is pretty much to defend a drill for most, most of the time. So you start with armor for the drill. It's about like 125 I believe. So whenever you're plant, planting the drill down, always make sure the engineer is planting it. That way it gets the extra help. And when you upgrade it one time, you repair the drill faster. You trap and then you upgrade it twice, traps get money back. And if you upgrade it three times, you get more defense while repairing the drill and the traps last longer. Now number four increases trap and explosive damage and a larger wallet to hold more cash. Now I don't really use engineer, but when I do, I only upgrade it once because there's not really that much points. There's no one really used traps like that much. And well, I might upgrade it to the third because you know you're gonna need some defense if you're close to being able to break the when the drill is about to be broken because you know you gotta repair that thing. But when you're repairing the drill, uh, you pretty much just want to have it repaired faster. So you just want to have that one, which is all right. Now the medic. This is a very important per uh, person, whoever's the medic, because it allows you to uh, revive your allies quickly. Because when you um, ally, uh, damn it, all right. When your allies go down, they're gonna need to be revived. Like <laughs> you don't want to lose if you all go down, you know. So it's good to have someone who's a medic because they get to revive faster instead of taking like so long to revive. Now it also lets you to move faster, which is pretty good because. Let's say I used to run uh, medic because with these perks you're gonna want to move around a lot because you don't want to take too much damage at once or you're just gonna die so fast. So it also increases your protection while reviving others. So like let's say you're the last one alive, you're like, oh no, I need to get someone up because you're gonna die because you have all these relics it's gonna help you bring you down. All right, so it helps give you protection while um reviving others, so you can take more damage. And you can move faster. Now, longer sprint and, and team mates near you regenerate health fast, fast, fast. All right, so you can run even longer, which is good. Now, your teammates regain health faster. That's good. So, like, let's say one of them just gets hit critically and they need some help or something. So then, therefore, it allows them to regain some health so if they stand near you. Now, if you upgrade it three times, ignore ongoing damage from gas clouds. Gas clouds normally appear like I think at random or like sometimes through cracks in the floor in the map. And what they do is they're really annoying because they really damage you. And they're mainly in the spots that you need to stand to really get good protection of the drill or whatever. And so you gotta watch out for those. But this it just makes like no damage happen to you. And if you upgrade it four times, you move very fast and you can run forever. And you can you can uh, regenerate health like. Yeah, let's say your teammates hurt, they can regenerate health no matter how far they are from you. Unlike uh, when you upgrade it twice, because when you upgrade it twice, you can only uh, uh, regain health if you're pretty close to the player. Alright, now let's go to pistols. This is what I'm going to just go through really fast. So the P20-26 uh, pistol. I wouldn't really recommend, well, I would recommend using this pistol. This is probably the second best pistol until you get the very last pistol. Now I do not know when you unlock the pistols, I'm sorry, I should have kept track of that. But they all do the same things when you upgrade them. So they increase damage at long range, you move faster, you get more ammo. Uh, the third upgrade is carry your pistol with two primary weapons. And the fourth one is hip fire two pistols, so it's pretty much a Kimbo. And yeah. So the first pistol, I recommend using that if you do not have any, if you don't have this one unlocked. This revolver pistol, it's only six bullets in a clip. It's not that useful. Three round burst is too uh, inconsistent. I don't really recommend it because they don't really help out that much in a pinch. Maybe if you upgrade it all the way. And the, the automatic pistol is very good. It's pretty much like a submachine gun in your hand. But it's a little weak, but it's pretty good. Now, about the pistols. You see how I have the relics right here where... I can only use the pistol. Now, there's not really a point 
upgrading it past level three because I don't upgrade it to level three because oh whoops wrong class all right there we go. I don't upgrade it to level three because I'm not gonna carry any other primary and to me I don't upgrade it for four because just hip firing two pistols pretty much decreases the accuracy and I'm just gonna keep missing so that really bothers me now I only upgrade it twice because that way I have more damage and more ammo, that's pretty much all I want in a pistol. So, I recommend using the very last pistol, because that's very useful. Now, this is going to be a very tricky category. So, you definitely want to have someone that has armor piercing ammo, because as you get towards the later uh, round waves of aliens, they're going to start having more armor, like the hunters. They have armor in their head plates, unless you hit them right in the glowing spots. Which is what you want to do. That way you can do more damage to them. And rhinos. Rhinos have major armor. It's very difficult to hit them in the weak points. So you're going to need armor piercing ammo to defeat rhinos. Now explosive ammo is pretty good. It's actually pretty useful. Uh, incendiary ammo. They pretty much set the aliens on fire. And they do damage to them over time. Stun ammo pretty much freezes them in place. And ammo is just regular ammo. Now I recommend... Having at least one person in your team having this regular ammo, just no matter what, just have at least one person regular ammo. Because the thing is, these four over here are special ammo. Each of these ammo, you can only take one of these, and you can always have regular ammo. So, like, let's say you have regular ammo, max regular ammo. All right, that's on the floor. You already got the regular ammo. Now you can get these ammo, and you can still have this ammo. Uh, the regular ammo. So like, let's say you get the specialty ammo after you got the regular ammo, and then you run out of specialty ammo. You're still gonna have the regular ammo, and same thing. So like, let's say you don't have any regular ammo, and you have a whole bunch of specialty ammo, and you pick up regular ammo. Your regular ammo is gonna be underneath your specialty ammo. But let's say you have armor piercing ammo. You're like, yeah, I got that armor piercing ammo. It's so good. And then you're like, oh, no, I'm running a little low on armor piercing ammo. Ah, I might as well get some stun ammo. Then you pick up some stun ammo, and then what happens is you lose the remaining ammo you have for your armor piercing ammo because that is a specialty ammo. The specialty ammo do not overlay. They just disappear while your regular ammo stays underneath, and you just get to your regular ammo the moment you run out of specialty ammo. Now, if you... Ah... If you level this up to the max, I'm pretty sure it's just one uh, point every level. And it allows you to regenerate ammo pretty much within a 20 foot radius of the box. So like let's say you're on like the last level where you got to defend this one huge hive. I know you're definitely running out of ammo. You can have like one person have this down just in case they're about to run out of specialty ammo and they need something to shoot with because they're just going to get mauled if there's like no ammo at all. So this thing could really help the ammo increase and really help them in a pinch too but it's always good to have at least just one person rocking this this is that's okay and pretty much the rest should pretty much see if they can really help out like if you guys don't have armor piercing ammo try to use the ones most to the right that's pretty good armor piercing is very useful to me so is explosive now let's go to team support now I'm currently using the armor because a lot of people need armor because of all the damage that you're going to be taking. You're going to be taking so much damage that you're definitely going to need armor. Now, let's start with Team Explosives. So, you get the originally two Semtexes and one ammo for launchers. Then two canister bombs and two ammo for launchers. And then two bouncing beddies and three ammo for launchers. Four claymores, four for launchers. Four bouncing beddies and five for ammo. Ah. 5 ammo for launchers. The thing is, no one uses explosives. Like, there's no point. The aliens are kind of unpredictable, un ah, unpredictable the way they move. And even though you, there's no point in having this because I rarely I see people running launchers because you're gonna just run out of ammo so easily. Now, Feral Instinct. This is pretty good actually. I was very surprising. Ah, uh, hold on, my sister's coming. Now, what this does is it, it makes your vision and hearing very weird. So like, you can see the enemies through the wall, like your sight turns yellow, and then you can see all the aliens and stuff. Now, when you upgrade it once, you move faster, which is pretty good if you're trying to 
be very agile and stuff. Number, number two, that's something very important I want to get to. What it does is it makes your health regenerate. So it's pretty much very useful if like you don't have anyone running armor or they're not a high level enough to have armor. Because what it does is it lets you have more health technically. Because like let's say you get hit once, it's just going to regenerate pretty fast. Now, if you keep upgrading, it goes longer and you can run longer too. So it's pretty useful. I run armor because I'm I usually just throw down armor everywhere I go. And I like to see that blue bar underneath. Alright, so pretty much when you upgrade armor, you just get more and more armor. And when you upgrade it to the fourth, you get extra armor. Now, this team booster, what it does is it pretty much makes you reload your weapon faster. You have a switch weapons faster, and that's pretty much it. I mean, my friend likes to use it because he's running that LMGs, and LMGs take a while to reload, so that's pretty useful. And, yeah. So... See, that's pretty much it, and uh, it's good because let's say your drill is almost done, <laughs> and that way you can just repair it pretty fast too, which is good. Now, random supplies, I don't really use it because sometimes, let's say I got a hypno knife or a tactical insertion or whatever it is, the flare, and like sometimes they give you a random thing that throws it away, like it just gets me mad. Because I like to use the flares to distract the zombies in case I'm down. That way they can revive me and I can help revive whoever else is down. And uh, hypno knives are pretty good because you can hypnotize a alien. And with that hypno knife you can help pretty much take the damage off you while your alien is probably defending you. Now strike package. I really recommend the sentry gun because as you see at the third upgrade you get 30. Uh, you dang Alright, armor piercing ammo is effective against the rhinos, so you can do damage to the rhinos. If you guys haven't seen the rhinos, they are a very mean bunch. And I like to upgrade it to the fourth because with that, I can put two sentry guns, doubling the damage, doubling the cover, help protect myself even more. I mean, sentry guns are very useful, especially at the last parts. Like, with two sentries, well, with, yeah, with two sentries and your whole team shooting a rhino. I think Rhino will die within 10 seconds. Within 10 seconds, which is pretty insane. Now, let's go to the start. The IMS. That can be pretty good if you're um in a pinch zone where like you're in some corner and you need to help revive some guy. It can be pretty useful. Motor strikes. I've seen these things do a lot of damage and do critical damage to certain hives that you need to damage yourself. Trinity Rocket. I've seen some pretty good stuff on that too. And uh, Vulture, I, a lot of people like to use the Vulture, but I don't really like it. Because to me, it's just kind of like waste of time and stuff. I would just really recommend the Sentry because that's an overall thing. Because you can have two of them at once. The only thing about the Sentry is you got to defend your Sentries. Because uh, the Hunters and the Seekers, they like to try to destroy your Sentry. And that just pisses me off. But it's pretty simple. You just stand near your Sentry, pretty much cover your Sentry while they're covering you. And just stay in a pretty much a good spot to look at the the hives too. It's pretty simple like that. I have them set up. You can have them set up looking at each other too. That could let them cover each other. But you also got to keep peeking at them time to time because there's one uh, alien hopping on them. Yeah. So equalizer. These things I do not really use at all because normally I'm using my gun. So I don't really have time to place a turret down or a grenade launcher or whatever. Because what happens is, I'm going to get attacked from the side, and these things slow you down. So the portable mini gun turns. Alright, so you place it down, it's pretty much a controlled sentry gun. You get more ammo, you spin the barrel faster, which causes you to shoot faster. And you can do a lot of damage when you upgrade it. Uh, armor piercing ammo, that can really help against uh, some rhinos and hunters and stuff like that. Maximum ammo just gives you more ammo and explosive bullets pretty much sets them on fire. Alright, uh, here's a grenade launcher, kinda like the sentry gun, the man sentry gun, the one from before. And what it does is it just shoots grenades. Not that useful to me unless you're trying to just uh, blow up and stuff. Then it's alright. Uh, crowd control, riot shield, that's kind of useful because what it does is it, uh, it can stay on your back too once you activate it. So. When it's on your back, it can like take some hits for you, kind of providing that little bit of armor and stuff. So when you upgrade it, it can actually help a lot. 
uh, the grenade launcher. This thing just blows up a lot of stuff. I've seen some people use it, but when you upgrade it the most, the max is just 12 bullets, so that's not that useful. Uh, the death machine, that's alright. Like, it makes you move slowly and stuff, but it's okay. It does a bunch of damage to different things. You can double the ammo to like 200, but the ammo pretty much goes out pretty fast if you ever used it. And that's pretty much all I've got right now. So, this has been the Assassin's Betrayer. If you like the video, give it a like. If you want, comment. Comments are useful. And if you're not, subscribe to become a penguin today and join the penguin colony. Alright, Assassin's Betrayer. See ya.